everyone, I'm Catherine, I'm the Physics Access Officer for Oxford University and in this video I'm going to be talking about the PAT, the Oxford Physics Aptitude Test. I'm recording this video on the 1st of September 2022 and at time of recording all the information here is up to date and correct. However, please do check the appropriate websites for up to date information if you're watching this back later. The best places to get information about the PAT are these three sites. So first of all we have the Oxford University website. There's a dedicated page all about the PAT with loads of information, loads of resources on there. That's ox.ac.uk forward slash PAT, P-A-T. Uh, secondly, the Department of Physics website. The PAT is set and run by the Physics Department. Um, if you go to physics.ox.ac.uk forward slash PAT, that has loads of information on, and I'll talk more about that later. Thirdly, the CAAT website. CAAT is the company that kind of administers the test so they do a lot of the kind of background stuff to make sure it all runs. Their website also has tons of information particularly stuff about dates and deadlines and things like that. I will put all three of these links uh, in the video description below so that you can find them really easily. So the first question what is the PAT? Uh, it's a very good question. The PAT is a two-hour test full of physics and maths questions and the intention is that it covers Roughly speaking, GCSE and AS level, so up to the end of year 12 material. The PAT must be sat by everyone applying to Oxford to study engineering, material science, physics or physics and philosophy. Anyone applying to any of those subjects needs to sit the PAT. You have to do the PAT, uh, I'm afraid. Uh, but there are some good reasons for that. Um, it's used as part of the admissions process for engineering, physics and materials. Um, that's sort of fundamentally why you have to do it. It is considered to be a really good marker for on-course performance for a lot of these things. So um, if you do well on the PAT, we think you're probably going to do well on the degree course. So it's a really useful indicator for us when we're trying to decide as part of our admissions processes who to shortlist and who to offer a place to. Uh, there is no hard pass mark or cut off on the PAT. Everyone is considered individually. Your PAT score is part of the evidence that we look at when we're considering applications. This year, the PAT is going to be on the 2nd of November, 2022. How do I get to sit the PAT? Uh, it is vital that you register for the test before the deadline. The deadline this year is the 30th of September, so that's coming up quite soon. And it is about two weeks earlier than usual. The deadline is usually the UCAS deadline. This year, it is not the UCAS deadline. The deadline is the 30th of September. So make sure that you are registered by that date. Have a chat with whoever might register you, whether that's your school's exams officer or someone else, um, and make sure they know that this earlier deadline is a thing and they're not running to the usual timetable. You can't register individually. You need to register through an authorised test centre. For most people, that's probably going to be their school, but it could be perhaps if your school can't do it for whatever reason, maybe another local school or a final option is an open test centre. Uh, there's lots more information about what test centres are available on the CAAT website. If your school is not currently an authorised test centre but wants to be one, then they can apply to be one. And the deadline for applying to be one is the 16th of September. So that's how to uh, register through an authorised test centre. It's really important that you know that you re are registered for this because we consider it to be the candidate's responsibility to be registered for the PAT, which means it's your it's your responsibility to do this. So you probably want to get hold of your candidate entry number as proof of entry. So when you're having a chat with your teacher or your school's exams officer, um, ask them to give you to send you the, the candidate entry number for your sitting of the PAT so that you know you've got that. You've got that confirmation that you have definitely been entered because it happens every year that we'll have some people who think they've entered and it's not quite gone through for whatever reason. If you've got your candidate entry number that is a nice little proof for you that this has all gone all right. Uh, registration opens on the 1st of September so you can register from now on. Now this is a really important question. I usually have access arrangements for exams. Can I apply for the same for the PAT? By access arrangements we mean things like getting extra time or having a modified paper or maybe something like using a laptop or having separate invigilation, something like that. Essentially, the answer is yes, you can apply for the same access arrangements as you would normally have. 
Make sure that your school or your test centre knows your requirements. You might have to provide them with some kind of medical evidence for that. However, you're very likely to be able to have the same arrangements that you normally would for a public exam in school. So if you think about if you were sitting, I don't know, maybe a GCSE exam or a, an A-level exam, the arrangements that you would have for that, you're very likely to be able to have the same for the PAT. So apply for them and make sure you get what you need. If you need a modified paper, for example, a large print paper or a braille paper, the deadline to apply for that is the 16th of September. Note, again, this is two weeks earlier than it might usually have been. The deadline to apply for all other access arrangements, so things like extra time, the deadline for that is the 30th of September. So that's the same deadline as registering for the exam. If you're uncertain about any of this, talk to your school's exams officer and they should be able to help. One question we get asked a lot is, are you allowed a calculator? The simple answer is yes. The slightly more complicated answer is, it depends what kind of calculator. There are calculator specifications, uh, so you can't just have absolutely anything. Um, those specifications are on the physics department website. There are certain types of calculators that are not allowed. So check that your calculator meets those specifications uh, and that you're all okay for that because you wouldn't want to get it taken away in the test. Um, it's worth noting that calculators were permitted for the first time a few years ago. So you might find if you're looking back at older past papers that they look a bit different, or maybe there are some questions there that are super easy with a calculator that would have been a bit more challenging without one. So just bear that in mind. So you haven't always been allowed a calculator for the PAT, but you are now. In terms of the content, uh, as I said earlier, it is intended to cover GCSE and AS level material in physics and maths. There is a syllabus available on the physics department website and that lists out all of the different topics that we might ask questions on um, across the physics and the maths topics. Like we said, we aim for everything to be covered in GCSE and year 12. However, some schools do modules in the we think should be year 12 material in year 13. They'll do things in an unconventional order. So there is a chance that there's some stuff on there that you haven't studied yet, that you might not have studied in time for the PAT. So you may need to do some self-study to make sure that you have covered everything. If you can have a chat to your teachers, have a look through the syllabus with them, see uh, what you've covered, what you might need to do some self-study on, see if they can support you in that in any way. Um, it's worth having a look at that syllabus fairly early on so that you've got enough time to make sure you're really up to speed on all of that stuff on there. You should be aware that the format and the syllabus of the PAT have changed over the years. So again, you may, if you're looking back at past papers, you might find some stuff uh, that is not on the syllabus anymore. And that's okay, um, but just, just a note to take care on that. In terms of the average mark, I get asked this quite a bit. Um, if you're really interested in looking at the marks for the PAT, you can find admissions reports for the physics department. Um, if you look on the physics website under PAT Pass Papers, they're all listed there. Um, and they give quite a bit of detail about the range of marks um, and uh, average marks and things like that. Um, for last year, for 2021, the mean mark for the physics applicants was 43.1%, um, so well under half. And the range was from 4% to 100%. So that's quite a wide range. There were some really, really quite uh, different marks in there. I think it's worth noting that in 2020, so two years ago, the top mark was 97%, which means that no one got full marks that year. This is designed to be quite a difficult test. It's designed to really stretch even the very best candidates. Um, so you'll find that your marks may well be quite different from what you're used to getting on um, past A-level papers or GCSE papers and things like that. It's intended to, uh, to really stretch you. It's worth saying, as I did earlier, there isn't a pass mark for this. If you have a look at the admissions reports, you'll see um, for the physics department, there is a certain mark above which we generally interview people. Um, but we will consider people who have a lower mark than that as well. There's no hard and fast cutoff. If you're really interested in knowing your mark, uh, then you can request it as part of the applicant feedback process. That doesn't happen until January. You can't ask for it while the admissions process is still going on for fairly obvious reasons. Um, but if you're really keen to know how you got on, then you can ask for it later down the line in January. Finally, I'm gonna say a little bit about preparing for the PAT. Uh, what can you do? Um, 
The name aptitude might suggest to you that you either have the aptitude and you can do it and you will do well, or you don't have the aptitude and you'll do badly. I don't think that really holds much water. Uh, it's definitely worth preparing for the pat. Um, and do, there are a few things that you can do. Number one, check the syllabus. As I already said, check the syllabus, learn anything that you're missing. Like I said, we could ask you about any of the stuff that is on the syllabus there. Um, you don't want to miss out on marks just because there was something that you didn't know or you didn't realise you should have known. So, number one, check the syllabus. Number two, uh, do a past paper as a practice paper under exam conditions. Uh, this would be one of my other one of my other top tips. Um, maybe you want to save up last year's past paper or one from the year before uh, and sort of just a little bit of time before the actual pat when you've kind of gone through all the syllabus stuff, you know you've kind of built up your skills and things like that and sit it under exam conditions. Get used to having to do these questions at speed because there's quite a lot of material to get through in the time that you're allocated and getting used to that is really worthwhile. Number three, uh, I think it's worth building up your problem solving skills by practicing doing physics and maths problems, particularly problems that will stretch you. Um, so that might be just doing more A-level type stuff, but you might be able to find other things. And I'll say a bit more about different resources in a moment um, that can help you to build up those problem solving skills. Finally, we run a preparing for the PAT course in the physics department. Um, it runs over the whole summer of year 12 to year 13, and we've got some more live sessions coming up later this month. So do join the course. You can catch up on all of the material. It's completely free. It's completely available online for you to work through at your own pace. Uh, if you go to physics.ox.ac.uk forward slash pat prep, that will take you to the sign up page and the page with all the material there. Uh, it's never too late to start. So uh, do have a look at all of that now. In terms of resources, there are a few things that I can point you to. Um, firstly, there are lots of past papers available on the physics department website and on the university website. They're exactly the same. Uh, they go all the way back from last year to 2006. So there's tons of material out there for you to have a look at. Um, like I said, uh, bear in mind that calculator rules have changed and the syllabus over time has changed hasn't changed very recently. Um, you can see that on the physics department website, but if you're looking at some of these older papers, then do keep that in mind. There are some past paper solutions available on the physics department website. So if you look back at some of the older papers, you will find like sets of worked answers for them. There aren't mark schemes or anything like that, but they can give you a bit of a sense of how to solve some of those problems. Uh, thirdly, there are some problem solving workbooks on the university website. Um, these contain a lot of the material used for the preparing for the PAC course. So if you're on that course, actually, you'll find there's too much overlap for it to be useful. But if you don't really want to do the course in the sort of structured way we've set it out, those problem solving workbooks have got a lot of material in that could be very helpful for you. Then uh, I, along with my colleague Helena, have been making lots of videos going through PAT past paper problems. Helena is my counterpart in the materials department. Um, and over last summer and this summer, we've been going through uh, old pat papers, um, picking out some of our favourite problems and solving them in YouTube videos. So check out the other website, uh, the other videos on the department uh, YouTube channel. Uh, and again, I'll put a link in the description below. Um, there are also a few other pat videos from the Department of Physics from uh, my colleague Jenny Barnes, who is very involved with it. Um, and you might find a few other bits and pieces there too. Um, so have a look at those, see what other information you can find from there. If you look at anything that is not from the university or from the physics department, uh, then please do take it with a pinch of salt. We can't vouch for any information that is um, on uh, external websites or anything like that. So be careful with any of that. However, there are some really useful free external resources uh, for building up your physics and maths problem solving. First of all, the British Physics Olympiad, BPHO, their website has tons of past papers and uh, helpfully they've also got loads of solutions available online. The Olympiad, you might find that the syllabus is kind of different, you might find it stretches you in a different way, but it will definitely push your problem solving skills beyond what you're used to doing at A-level and that's a really useful thing. Secondly, Isaac Physics. Uh, this is a free problem solving kind of online platform. Um, it's got tons of questions on. They're really nicely organised by uh, topic and by difficulty. So you can build up again your problem solving skills by going through some of those. Um, 
then uh, next time questions uh, if you just have a little google of that phrase you'll find that in quite a few different places around the website uh, around the internet um, they are questions designed to stretch your kind of physics lateral thinking to make you sort of think twice and develop your physics intuition a bit so there are not particularly like pat problems as a rule but it's worth if you're looking for something to stretch you having a look at those having a think about some of those to give you a bit of a different perspective on some of the physics ideas that you've been learning and finally i want to study engineering they've got lots of nice physics and maths problem solving resources on their website um so again something to check out uh if you've again looking for different ways to stretch your physics and maths so that was my whistle stop tour around the pat the physics aptitude test do check out the physics department website uh, physics.ox.ac.uk forward slash pat for tons of information um, and particularly there's an FAQs page there which can be really helpful. If after you've looked at all of that information you've still got questions left you can get in touch with us by emailing inquiries at physics.ox.ac.uk and we'll be more than happy to help you with whatever your problems are. Thank you for watching, I hope that was helpful and best of luck with sitting the pat. <laughs>